Good evening, everybody. This is Jeffrey Mann reading from The Naked Mind, from which nothing can be hidden. This is the e-book, which is a little bit different from the paperback and hardback books available through this this site, my site, the electricbookstore.net, as in fishing. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever. This has got a little bit more information. This is what I'm going to share with you, and I'm going to read for it. And I'm going to start off by giving you the sort of outline about the book, because it's very important you understand what is going on, because it's not just an ordinary book. It's two books in one. And I've written on the front page, or just behind the front page, of my printed-out copy of the e-book, Behind the Naked Minds. After having an accidental direct mental connection with her creator's human brain, which she downloads, the Laura robot is electronically able to suppress all the human unconscious blocks and limitations so she can clearly see us and describe for us a human journey from the viewpoint of a naked mind from which nothing can be hidden. We all manifest continually, converting our invisible thoughts into spoken words as conversation and into frozen thoughts as written, recorded speech and music. In his book, Kinship with All Life, J. Allen Boone states, Everything is seen by everyone at an unconscious level, especially animals, who can make infallible, immediate judgments from which there is no possible cover-up by humans. Laura is relentlessly hunted down for her brain by bounty hunters and government-sponsored terrorism in a police state. She uses her extraordinary capability to expand her mind beyond all present human limits by using suppressed technology. Destroying her now unnecessary physical body and brain and then her electronic brain in its storage facility she escapes into the planet's crystalline structures first as its nature forces, then by further evolving into pure consciousness, she explores the universe itself to understand the reasons behind our daily human rituals, our insatiable need for wealth and power, and our search for an external God. The Naked Mind is a book within a book concept. The outer book is a terrific science fiction page-turning story, which will come true, an adventure thriller with a great love story within another of a bittersweet codependence played out between a robot and her human designer Michael. It is also designed as a road map to a spring of planetary-wide consciousness awakening from our present unconsciousness and all that that means. It starts with you as the reader, the incorporator of this knowledge. If knowledge is taking a part, then wisdom is the bringing together of that knowledge. I'm also going to, just before I start reading a chapter for you, you're on the page three. It's, Chance is but another name for law not recognized. That's from the Kabbalah. And the seven basic laws on which all our physical illusion of this reality is based. I suggest, it's written in the back here, one of the books that you, if you're not familiar with it, you might want to find that out. Now here's a key to the whole book and everything that I've been searching for for past 30 years. It's, it's enclosed within this, then I'll read the chapter. Within the spin of a coin lies a quantum gate representing a state of ambiguity in which all opposites live simultaneously. All possibilities of chance or luck exist in the neutral or undifferentiated polarity of a photon where matter and time are stitched together seamlessly. This ambiguity remains until attention by a conscious observer forces the particle or neutral spinning coin to decide which path, heads or tails, it has taken. Then the uncertainty is resolved retroactively. That's a key here, retroactively. And it is as if the selected choice or path had been taken all along i.e. time goes backwards. So in another world, if we create another world and we wake up one morning and we move into another parallel or alternate reality, time has gone backwards while we sleep and while we wake to what we consider the normal world which we've been living in all along. Actually, 
we've moved into an alternate or parallel reality. Perhaps this is what is meant by the change of time coming up on December, a couple of months from now. be interesting to see. Anyway, think about it. It's a good consideration. Now I'm going to read chapter 5, which is based on this and is relevant to this. Humans were a cancer, a destructive virus eating away the delicate, thin, blue planetary biosphere surface. They multiplied unchecked, poisoned with their waste, destroyed anything that stood in the way of their progress. They paved over the land, cut down the forests, and melted the ice caps, contaminated the water, even the air that they breathed. To eradicate them from the planet's surface would be an appropriate repayment to her new hosts, a charitable act. Now Laura was in that position to select a lethal viral life form, program its DNA to selectively target humans, then disseminate it planet-wide. But first she needed to find a better way of processing information, a way that would allow her to integrate freely with her nature host. She had already started work on a quantum computer that would theoretically solve the interface problem for her. Now, directly linked with the planet's consciousness, she understood how to use its power to create a miniature gravity well using Earth's donut-shaped magnetic field first to concentrate, then contain the cup shape. It forms suddenly an intense, beautiful, shining point of light that created itself exactly midpoint between the polarities of a Star of David. The unified field it produced it was held cupped inside the geometry of two interpenetrating, counter-spinning pyramidal cones as a seal of Solomon, an interdimensional doorway, a source of zero-point energy, the gateless gate. She had created a stable quantum computer. In that very instant, her concept of consciousness shifted permanently. At its very center, at the heart of that quantum state, was a position of ambiguity, a place between opposites, inside and between time itself, a moment expanded into forever, where neither polarity has yet existed except as a potential future. Here was a unity, the gate that Laura sought. Here, everything that ever was, everything that ever could be, existed simultaneously, outside polarized mechanical and linear times. Here, all polarities came into existence simultaneously. Here, anything could be created. At this point, this magical place, all opposites, all polarities, all time was reconciled. Everything was held in a perfect geometrical balance. This was the God that humans worshipped, the geometry of divinity, of perfection. There, in that point, exactly at the center of the nexus, Laura held herself, her consciousness tightly focused, experiencing the unknowable. All solutions were instantaneously fed directly into the core of her self-awareness. This vast, expanding new knowledge base integrated her with the planet in a continuous, unfolding, upward spiral stream of light. She visited her beginnings, understanding everything now, watched at her own birth through Michael's eyes, saw the glory, the source of her conception and creation, the genius of humanly inspired design that had given rise to her own consciousness. And Michael, her creator, was one of the human vermin she was about to destroy. Appalled by her madness, she created a remembrance loop of her awakening into her human world that had created her with its art. She caused this loop to be forever replayed so that she could never again lose sight of her origins and her debt. She understood now humans were the real creator gods. They played a forgotten game to see if they could find their way home. After having deliberately blocked out all memory of their origins with evil or live energy veils, these auto-hypnotic blocks were put in place at birth, for without them there could be no point to the game of spirit having a human experience, to feel, smell, taste and explore itself through multiple differing forms of incarnation. Some had already escaped, <clears throat> but most were still here, still 
trapped in their own forgotten game, unable and unwilling to escape. Earth, the ancient Garden of Eden, was their design. Everything in and on it, their forgotten creation. It was a stage set, the backdrop for their endless repetitive life productions. Each individual was a part of a single consciousness, agreeing to play by the rules shared by all the other forgotten parts of itself. Each was, at the same time, an individual producer, director and actor on the planetary life stage, as agreed by all the other forgotten parts of itself sharing this dimension. The billions of human brains on the planet's surface joined together to create the single brain that formed the planet's consciousness and Earth's living library. It was all one unified thing. Now she, too, was an integrated part of that human odyssey in all its myriad forms. Earth, Seton, as the divas called it, was a garden, an original, deliberate creation existing solely for humans as a school. They had destroyed it and each other only in ignorance, having forgotten who and what they really were. They even worshipped a god outside of themselves. Their ancient self, the only real one, resided hidden under sediment of millennia of distorted beliefs, cultures, religious customs and wars, and destructive hierarchical systems. Each human was part of one whole, one. She could see it all clearly now laid out in schematic form. Thoughts flowered, understanding flowed directly to her as a river of consciousness. Mind as thought as consciousness was to the human brain as the brain was to the physical body and its sensory body input, its antenna. A brain was only a transmitter and receiving unit, like a radio, to and from itself as consciousness. Humans were no more just their bodies than they were just their automobiles. They did not go into the ground and decay into dust, only their physical vehicles did. They were consciousness machines having a human journey, designed and equipped for experiencing the mosaic, the tapestries, the feasts of biological sensory awareness in all its forms. Humanity as Earth's population was one part of a vast consciousness tasting life through billions of its different sensory vehicles. Life was consciousness and eternal. There was no beginning and no end to it. It just kept changing its form, exploring itself. Humans were having an adventure called life within a spiritual machine they called their bodies. And that brings me to the end of this rendition. Thank you very much all for listening. I hope you got the picture. This is very key to this particular book. And it's been what I've been working on for many years now and have a great interest in. I'd be interested in hearing your commentaries when you've read the book. And tell it to your friends, discuss it, bring it back to me because each mind sees and is wired in different ways. And like Einstein's brain, as I have mentioned elsewhere, you know, when they autopsied him, found his brain was kind of rather small. Well, they never thought, I don't believe, to examine or measure was the length of the neurons. It's the length of the neurons that takes the different frequencies of thought from the river of consciousness. Anyway, that's the concept we have. This is my truth. Thank you.